Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, many of us find it extremely difficult to get up early every morning, but our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has been doing it for years. Yes, and I've learned one thing about early rising that's helped me immeasurably. Once I jump out of bed, close the window, and do my setting up exercises, there's only one more thing I want to do, and that's to get right back in bed again. <laughs> Last Friday morning, though, I was up and almost dressed by the time my landlady knocked on the door. Time to get up, Connie. I am up, Mrs. Davis. Come on in. I'm trying to get to school early so I can chat with Mr. Boynton for a few minutes before our first class. Is Mr. Boynton still as unapproachable as ever, Connie? I guess so, Mrs. Davis. But you know something? During this past week, I've gotten closer to him than ever before. Really, dear? How did you do that? I've been wearing my sneakers to school. <laughs> I hope I've got time for breakfast before Walter Denton comes to pick me up. There's something he wants to talk to me about before school starts. Well, he can talk to you at breakfast, Connie. My goodness, you've got to keep your strength up some way. We both know you don't get enough sleep. Well, I didn't last night. Minerva slept in here with me, and she was very restless. I don't know what's the matter with that cat lately. Between you and me, Connie, I think she's got something. Between you and me, I think she's got several. <laughs> Maybe it's a mistake to let her get so friendly with the collie next door. They play together all the time, you know. Oh, so that's the source. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Minerva had me up half the night with her pounding. That's just her tail beating on the floor while she's hunting. Well, I don't mind her tail thumping so much, but every time she catches something with one paw, she applauds with the other three. <laughs> Suppose we join Minerva in the breakfast nook. I've just given her some milk. Fine, I'll have a saucer full, too. <laughs> yeah. Sit right down, dear. I'll boil you a couple of eggs. And just one egg will be plenty, Mrs. Davis. Mm. Well, I... Oh, <coughs> Walter... That must be Walter Denton now. Just six eggs will be plenty, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> the door isn't locked. Come in, Walter. Ah, hiya, Miss Brooks, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Walter. How do you want your eggs, Walter? Uh, quickly, please. <laughs> you have any breakfast yet? Oh, sure, but it's 7.30 almost, and we eat an awful early breakfast at my place. How early? Quarter to seven. <laughs> I don't know how you're still standing up. <laughs> I'll whip up an omelet for all of us. Miss Brooks, I'd like to ask you about something. What's that, Walter? Well, as you know, Halloween is usually celebrated tomorrow night, Saturday. But Harriet Conklin's going up to her folks' bungalow at Crystal Lake for the weekend, so we wondered if it would be all right with you if we celebrated the holiday tonight. Well, why come to me? Shouldn't you contact the Goblins Union? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to sort of have a little party. You know, Harriet and my pal Stretch Snodgrass and I, and... Uh, we were planning on inviting you, too. Oh? Uh, where were you planning on holding this party, Walter? At your place. <laughs> How nice of you to invite me along. <laughs> but I'm afraid we couldn't have any Halloween parties here, Walter. After all, I don't own this cottage. I just rent a room for Mrs. Davis. Oh, we've already got her permission. She's going to the movies tonight. Harriet asked her on the phone yesterday. It's just up to you, Miss Brooks. Well, I'm afraid I'm not interested in Halloween parties, Walter. I've got quite a bit of work to catch up on, and tonight looks like an ideal time to do it. Sorry, but you'll have to hold your party someplace else. Well, gee, Miss Brooks, Harriet and Stretch will be awfully disappointed. And so will Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton? Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to him yesterday, and he was saying what swell fun he always thought Halloween was when he was a kid. And then we invited him to the party, too, and he accepted now there's no place to have the party. What's wrong with having the party right here? <laughs> Hello, principal's office. Osgood Conklin himself speaking. <laughs> Hello, Osgood. It's me, Martha. We've been married 18 years, woman. I know your name. <laughs> that you left home this morning without even saying goodbye. Well, that's easily remedied. Goodbye. <laughs> Wait, Osgood. 
I just called to remind you about your doctor's appointment this morning. He said he wanted to see you before we go to Crystal Lake tomorrow. I am well aware of that fact. I've had plenty of time to think about it during the sleepless hours I spent listening to your dog thumping his tail at the foot of our bed all night. <laughs> but Prince was so lonesome, dear. After all, we've got each other. He's all alone. Well, he wasn't alone last night. <laughs> I never heard such scratching in all my born days. What's he got, anyway? Well, he can't possibly have anything, dear. You know he doesn't play with other dogs. In fact, he would have died of loneliness last week if I hadn't taken him over to Mrs. Davis's to play with her cat, Minerva. <laughs> well, you've got to keep him away from me. My blood pressure is higher than it's been in years. To make my morning complete, when I bent down to tie my shoelaces, my glasses fell off. Did they break? Not until I straightened up and stepped on them. <laughs> well, darling, in a couple of days in Crystal Lake, that will make a new man of you. Now go down to the doctor's and get a nice sedative to take with you. Very well, Martha. It's a good thing I have an extra pair of glasses with me or I couldn't find my way to the door. Now, whatever you do, Osgood, don't break those. Thank you, my dear. I think that's sterling advice. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, it's later than I thought. I'd better hurry. So you see, Walter, if we all meet in the cafeteria at lunchtime, we can make the plans for... Oh! Good. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I presume. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin. I didn't see you coming. Oh, dear, I seem to have broken your glasses. Do you have another pair? No, Miss Brooks, I haven't. <laughs> But perhaps I could get you a long stick and let you smash the windows in my office! You seem to be in quite a hurry, Mr. Conklin. Could I maybe take you somewhere? Who is speaking? <laughs> it's me, Walter Denton. Your daughter Harriet's dream boat. My daughter Harriet's... I'll talk to you later, Miss Brooks. Denton, pick up that shattered glass. Yes, sir. Well, what should I do with it, Mr. Conklin? Eat it, you lame brain dunce! <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Conklin's sure in a bad mood today. He looks pretty purple, doesn't he? Even for him. He certainly is excitable. Hi, Walter. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Hi. Hello, Harriet. Did you run into Daddy yet this morning? It's in the hands of the insurance company now. <laughs> His temper's pretty miserable today. Yes, I know. Poor Daddy's been depressed all week long. I don't know what it is. We all try to please him. What he needs is some recreation and diversion. Say, I have an idea. What is it, Miss Brooks? Well, instead of my place tonight, why don't we have our Halloween party at your house, Harriet? That way we could surprise your father and cheer him up a little bit. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you've done it again. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids which are at their worst after meals or snacks. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. <laughs> Anxious as I was to get back into Mr. Conklin's good graces, I determined to make the Halloween party Friday night a roaring success. I had asked the kids to meet me in the school cafeteria at lunchtime, and the first one to show up was Madison's star athlete, Stretch Snodgrass. Although a whiz on the football field, 
Stretch's outstanding scholastic achievement occurred during a test last week when he spelled his name correctly. <laughs> I was having a cup of coffee when he approached my table. So here I am, Miss Brooks. Mind if I sit down? Not at all, Stretch, but wouldn't you like to bring some food over before we discuss the party? Oh, no, ma'am. I already ate. Please, Stretch. <laughs> I've already eaten. Oh, good. Then we can get right down to business. <laughs> Walter said he thought we all ought to masquerade as something tonight. That's a fine idea, Stretch. You could come as a student. <laughs> I got my outfit all set, Miss Brooks. I got some chaps home and spurs and, and two six-shooters that shoot real blanks. I'm coming as Hopalong Cassidy. That is, if nobody minds. Why should anybody mind, unless Roy Rogers shows up? <laughs> what are you going to masquerade as, Miss Brooks? Oh, I haven't made up my mind yet, Stretch. Of course, every good Halloween party should have a witch. Yes, I might come as a witch. Perfect. <laughs> Don't sound so enthusiastic. It's pretty short notice to get a costume made, and I may not... Why go to all that trouble? Why don't you just wear what you got on? <laughs> Big as he is, I'll have to slug him. Now, look, Stretch, I... Hi, Miss Brooks, Stretch. Well, things are sure shaping up. Look at these swell noisemakers I bought this morning. When did you find time to get all this junk, Walter? I sneaked out of one of my morning classes. Walter, you didn't. Well, it was important, Miss Brooks. Besides, there's no harm done. Nobody even noticed I was gone. That's what I like, a nice, observant teacher. Oh, it wasn't the teacher's fault. You were facing the blackboard at the time. <laughs> hey, look at this horn. It's got a siren in the mouthpiece. Listen. Please, Walter, you're in the cafeteria. So what? One more blast like that, the beef stew will pull over to the right. <laughs> now tell me, how are you going to the masquerade? I got a terrific idea, Miss Brooks. I'm just going to put on an old sheet. Do you think Mr. Conklin will get a kick out of me as a ghost? If he thought it was on the level, it would add ten years to his life. <laughs> what are you coming as, Miss Brooks? Oh, I haven't quite decided yet. Any suggestions? Well, just one. I don't want you to think I'm being fresh or anything, but, well, this is going to be a Halloween party, and... Well, I'd be glad to furnish you with a broom. <laughs> I guess I'm a natural for it. Uh, look who's coming over. Oh, it's Mr. Boynton. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Hello, Walter. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Hello, Stretch. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Goodbye, Walter. Goodbye, Stretch. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. Stretch. Don't you know the old expression, two's company, three's a crowd? Well, sure I do, but there's four of us. <laughs> Come on, Stretch, we gotta help Harriet figure out a costume for tonight. Uh, see you later, folks. Yeah, see you later, folks. Oh, so long, boys. Well, Miss Brooks, I think it's a splendid idea you're giving this little surprise party for our principal tonight. It should do him a world of good. It should do us a world of good, too, if he brightens up a bit. What kind of an outfit do you think you'll wear, Mr. Boynton? Well, I... I've got a skeleton costume home that I used to have quite a bit of fun with in my college days. It's just a black, tight-fitting garment with a bunch of bones hanging on it. Bones? <laughs> yes, they're treated with a phosphorescent paint that makes them glow in the dark. It's quite a startling effect, the more so since I gathered the bones when I was an anatomy student. From anyone I know? <laughs> I don't mean to dwell on it, Miss Brooks, but I find bones a rather fascinating subject, don't you? That depends on what they're wrapped up in. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, how, how are you masquerading tonight? Oh, I don't know. If you're coming as a skeleton, maybe I'll come as a bottle of vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really a little stumped, Mr. Boynton. What do you think I should be? Well, the two most popular figures associated with Halloween are a black cat and a witch. And I'm much too tall for a cat. <laughs> Walter! Oh, Walter! Yes, Miss Brooks? Get a lube job on that broom, boy. Constance Brooks rides tonight. I'm glad we're going away in the morning, Martha. Dr. Benson told me I'm very close to the breaking point. Yes. Of course, Oswald. Uh, don't shout so. <laughs> He said that some of my trouble was caused by my blood pressure, but that part of it was due to an overactive imagination. He wants me to be calm, relax more. 
<laughs> I'd like to see him relax with that recurring dream I've had. You mean the one where the ghost visits you at night? Yes. <laughs> Only the last couple of times it's gotten worse. Instead of a plain ghost, I've been getting one with Walter Denton's head on it. <laughs> really, Osgood, I, I just don't know what you've got against that poor boy. Harriet's very fond of him. Then she should see a doctor, too. <laughs> Where is she, Martha? Well, she's in her room, dear, getting dressed. She said something about a party tonight. Parties? It's all kids nowadays think about. Well, there won't be any parties at Crystal Lake. There won't be any nightmares, either. Why, Martha, do you realize that while I was sitting in the doctor's office today, I saw a bulldog by his desk? A bulldog? It was the shadow of his umbrella stand. But I almost jumped out of my skin before he explained it. Well, things like that happen to people every day, Osgood. Not to me, they don't. At least they'd better not. How do you think the Board of Education would like it if they thought one of their principals went around seeing bulldogs? <laughs> Just don't mention it to anyone, darling. Now I'm going to get you a glass of warm milk, and you stay right comfy in your chair till I get back. You're very well. <laughs> yes. That thing looked like a bulldog. <laughs> Martha's right, though. I'd better not mention it to a soul. Now, who in the world can that be? Coming! Good evening, Mr. Conklin. May I come in? There's no tactful way I can refuse you admission. <laughs> Come in, Miss Brooks. Have the others arrived yet? Others? What others? You'll see when they get here. Is Harriet at home? Yes, yes, she's putting on her party dress. Oh, then you know about it. It should do you a lot of good, Mr. Conklin. There's nothing like a house full of people to get your mind off yourself. A house full of... Uh, Miss Brooks, is this party to be given in this house? Of course. I see. Then if you'll excuse me, I'll just take my hat and coat and beat an orderly retreat. But, Mr. Conklin... My doctor has forbidden any excitement whatsoever. Your doctor? This is a fine time to tell me. I mean, I didn't know you were in such bad shape, Mr. Conklin. I am on the verge of a nervous collapse, Miss Brooks. But I don't want to spoil everybody's fun. I'll just leave quietly. Leave? But, Mr. Conklin, where will you go? What's the difference where I go? I'll just wander around the park like a homeless gypsy. You can't do that. You wouldn't look good in earrings. I mean, <laughs> you're not a well man, Mr. Conklin. Look, Mrs. Davis is going to the movies tonight. Now, why don't you let me drive you over to our place until I can eliminate the horde of pests, uh, guests who are coming here? <laughs> You'll love it over there, Mr. Conklin. You'll be able to relax completely. If it will stave off my breakdown, Miss Brooks, it's the least I can do for my family. Miss Brooks left right after dinner, Mr. Boynton. I guess she forgot to buy a few items for the party tonight. I'm sure she'll be right back. Fine. Swell. This way our surprise will work out even better. Surprise? Yes, ma'am. We thought we'd try out some of our Halloween tricks on Miss Brooks before we go over to Mr. Conklin's house. That's a wonderful idea. I hope I didn't scare you in my ghost outfit. No, I thought you were the laundry man. <laughs> How do you like my costume, Mrs. Davis? My, you've lost weight, haven't you? <laughs> this, this is a skeleton suit in honor of Halloween. <laughs> Isn't that terrifying? And who's this cowboy with you? Well, I'm Hopalong Cassidy, Mrs. Davis, but I'm really stretched snodgrass. <laughs> I'd never have known. Well, if you'll all go into the house, I'm sure Miss Brooks will be delighted to see you. I've got to get down to the theater now. Oh, what movie are you seeing tonight, Mrs. Davis? Jolson sings again, again. <laughs> again, again? I saw it last week also. <laughs> Have a nice time, children. <laughs> what should I do with this bucket of water we're ducking for apples in, Waller? Oh, just put it down by the piano, Stretch. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. Before Miss Brooks comes back, let's all hide somewhere so we can really surprise her. Good idea, Walter. Now, why don't you get behind that couch, stretch you hide behind the kitchen door, and I'll get into the hall closet. Great. Then we'll all come out when I blow this whistle. <coughs> okay? Got you, Walter. Hey, look, out the window. Miss Brooks is coming up the walk, and she's got Mr. Conklin with her. 
Mr. Conklin? Oh, she probably wanted to get him out of the way while we were getting things ready at his place. So much the better. We'll surprise both of them at the same time. <laughs> now, first I'll put the lights out. Quick, let's get out of sight. Well, here we are, Mr. Conklin. I guess Mrs. Davis has left for the movies. The lights are all out. But it does seem quite deserted in here. I'll turn on this hall light so you can see to hang your things up in the closet. I'll turn some lights on in the living room while you put your hat and coat away. Thank you, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Miss Brooks! Miss Brooks! What is it, Mr. Conklin? What's the trouble? Your closet! In the hall! What do you keep in there? <laughs> coat, Mr. Conklin. I see. I see. Tell me, Miss Brooks, is it a long black coat with luminous bones? <laughs> luminous bones? Uh, oh, no. Uh, oh, please wait right here, Mr. Conklin. I'll investigate. Oh, it's me, Miss Brooks. You should have seen Mr. Conklin's face when Get he Get was... behind those other coats immediately, Mr. Boynton. But, Miss Brooks... I you... can't explain now, but don't you dare come out of there until you get a signal. Well, Miss Brooks, what did you see? See? Uh -huh. I didn't see anything, Mr. Conklin. It must have been your imagination. My imagination? <laughs> then the doctor was right. Is that, Mr. Conklin? I'd, I'd rather not talk about it, Miss Brooks. If I could just lie down somewhere. Oh, of course, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> just stretch out on this couch. I'll go get another cushion for you. All right. Uh... Ah, uh, that's better. Ooh. <laughs> I must be quite a sick man. <laughs> if I weren't sick, I wouldn't be moaning like this. <laughs> On the other hand, it's better than try... What am I saying? I'm not the one who's moaning. I've returned. I've come back. Who's that? Where are you? Look behind you. Behind the cow. Behind the cow. Are you all right? What happened? Miss, Miss Brooks, how long have I been asleep? Asleep? Yeah. You just hit the couch, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Which reminds me, maybe you'd better see a good psychiatrist. This screaming of yours can lead to something dangerous. Just, just do me a favor, Miss Brooks. Look behind that couch. Certainly, sir, if it'll make you feel any better. But I assure you, there's absolutely nothing behind this couch. <laughs> I'm sorry if I startled you, Mr. Conklin, but my cat Minerva's back here. With a sheet? She was making her bed. <laughs> Stay out of sight, Minerva. There's a good <coughs> gurga boy. A girl. If you don't mind, Miss Brooks, I'd like to take a couple of pills my doctor prescribed. May I have some water, please? Certainly, sir. If you've got an extra pill or two, I'll be happy to join you. <laughs> Just sit right here, Miss Conklin. I'll go into the kitchen and get some water. No, on second thought, you'd better come with me. I don't want you to get nervous again. Yes, I, I think you're right, Miss Brooks. It doesn't do for me to be alone lately. Now, where's that light switch? Well, dog might catch if it ain't roundup time. <laughs> Was that? <laughs> what was what? <laughs> Miss Brooks, do you mean to tell me I've actually taken leave of my senses? Oh, it isn't a real leave, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> You're just on a weekend pass. <laughs> 
Oh, lots of people get temporary hallucinations. Maybe we'd better go back to your house. Yes, yes, at a time like this, I suppose I should be near my loved one. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Mr. Conklin! Look, it's me! Denton! When did you... How did you... What's this? It's just my coat coming over. Get back to the closet. <laughs> it's me, Mr. Conklin. I'm a skeleton, see? Look at me, Mr. Conklin. I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and I'll plug the first ombre that makes a move. Snodgrass! I... <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> oh, I must be calm. I must control myself. What's wrong, Mr. Conklin? You don't seem to be enjoying yourself. Yeah, you act all jumpy and funny. Gosh, Miss Brooks went to a lot of trouble to get this thing organized. Walter, please. Oh, Miss Brooks organized it, did she? Sure, she planned the whole thing. She deserves every bit of credit. Well, she's certainly going to get it. Miss Brooks, I want you... Miss Brooks, Miss Brooks, get your head out of that bucket. This is no time to be ducking for apples. Who's ducking for apples? I'm trying to drown myself. <laughs> Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks. Returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable, even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Conklin was so glad to find out that the things he thought had been happening to him had been happening to him that he excused us all and hurried home. Shortly afterwards, I excused Walter and Stretch, which left just Mr. Boynton, the parlor sofa, and me. Well, here we are, Miss Brooks. You know, with that lamplight shining on your hair, you're, you're absolutely... Well... Yes, Mr. Boynton? Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo, folks! What's that? Look, at the window, it's Mrs. Davis with a pumpkin head. Just what I needed. Happy Halloween, Connie. Trick or treat. I've got a trick, Mrs. Davis. Here's 60 cents. Treat yourself to Jolson Sings again, again, again. <laughs> Next week, we'll get to another Armist Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, here is actual, factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the Palm Olive Lather way to shave, described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves, the Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream way. Be sure to listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.